Ah, scrambled eggs. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're gonna to be talking all about electromagnetic fields, induction cooktops, all this kind of cool stuff. Now, I just got a new induction cooktop and I've got an EMF meter. I'm gonna be sharing with you how much radiation is coming out of the induction cooking. Now, one of the things you might read about induction is that if you have a pacemaker, you shouldn't use an induction cooktop because of the electromagnetic field being generated out of this fella. So this fella runs on just standard electricity over here in Australia is 50, 60 hertz of electricity and it converts that into kilohertz. Now, according to the WHO, there's a lot of research about effects and all this kind of stuff, like uh, pregnancy outcome. They found that it's, uh, you get premature births. There's a indication that you get premature births in the electronics field. They don't know 100% sure if it is due to, you know, radiation coming out of electricity, but they're researching it. They couldn't repeat it in animal studies and all that stuff. They found that it can affect your eyes, electromagnetic fields and cancer. It says highly controversial. It is clear that if electromagnetic fields have cancer effects, then the risk is extremely store, small. However, um, you know, they're still researching it. And uh, there is an increased risk of childhood leukemia with exposure to magnetic fields. That's what it says on the WHO and they're still researching it. So laboratory studies at the moment fail to reproduce the effects that they found. However, large scale studies are currently underway. Interesting stuff over here, if you continue looking into it as well. Uh, electromagnetic, electromagnetic hypersensitivity and depression. Some individuals report depression from this stuff and there is focus on research. They're still researching this game, so we don't know what's going on. Symptoms you might find, this is according to Healthline, depression, headaches, tiredness, fatigue, you know, lack of concentration, loads of stuff here. Now, something I'll show you with the test results, of course, but something to do with induction, the way it works is, like I said, it converts normal AC electricity into kilohertz, and that's how it gets the power going. Now, fortunately, this EMF meter that I've got out of here, it only can detect low frequency as in AC, 50, 60 hertz, or megahertz and above. So I'm not gonna be getting the actual induction radiation field coming out of it because I can't measure kilohertz with this fella. I am gonna be getting another EMF meter, so stay tuned for that. I'll tell you exactly what's going on. But we will be, be get what well, we will be getting an indication to the EMF come out of this, at least when it comes to the electricity. Now, before I jump into other effects, I'll give you some sort of baseline guidance. So the limit, the limit value is 5,000 volts per meter. So 5,000 is what the WHO says the limit is. I'm gonna turn this fella on. I've got my EMF meter up here right now from a distance of about a meter and a half. 22, nothing's going on here. This is, it's just actually powered on. It isn't actually turned on or anything like that, but we're getting 200 volts per meter, 300 volts per meter. And all it is is just being turned on 700 volts per meter and then 50. And this isn't even turned on. So there's a lot of electricity being braced for being turned on to get converted into kilohertz when we get this going. So I'm gonna turn this on right now. You can hear it buzzing away. Now, the great thing about induction is that it's 100% great for energy usage. So older electrical methods, they converted the electrical rods into heat and there was about a 30% loss of power from that conversion. This is 100% conversion because the, the plates underneath are magnetized. So it's pure energy transfer. So it's great for the environment. But anyway, back to it, it's to totally on. It's on level nine. This, in the inside here, we're getting around 600 volts per meter squared. And as we back away to just say movement level, we're getting 100 volts, 100 to 50 volts per meter squared. So if you're cooking and you leave an arm's length distance, you're pretty much getting the amount of volts per meter squared as you would be if you stuck your head right next to a socket. So there's about 177, 150 over here, right next to the socket. And let's back away a little bit further. So we're 72. So from about, I'd say an arm's length away extended, it's pretty much the volts per meter has dropped all the way down to ambient room level temperature. So the highest we got here was around, I'd say, when it was just on and prepping the coils to be converting it into kilohertz and getting the induction working, it went up to over 500. But when it was operation from about an arm lengths away, it was pretty much the same amount of voltage as you get from sticking your head right next to one of these power lines because you get EMF leaks from wires and from about an extended arm lengths away, it was pretty much down to ambient room level temperatures. Now, interestingly enough, let's go over and compare this induction to a fridge. So over here, I've got a, a double door Samsung French door style fridge, and I'm gonna get the EMF meter and bring it close to the fridge. 
And just by the door itself, we're getting 150 volts meter squared, almost 200. Interestingly enough, if I shove it into the ice maker, look at this, look at this field. There's a big magnetic field being generated here, 900 volts per meter squared. So if you are concerned, just you know, don't be <laughs> sticking your head in here. And interestingly enough, if you are interested in this stuff, yes, humans, the brain does operate on EMF. This is a, an article from Scientific American. Pascal Fries, a German neuropsychologist, he has explored how the brain works and it works on gamma, theta and beta waves and those frequencies go from around 4 hertz all the way up to 90 hertz. So from 4 to 90 is your brain communicating. Obviously you have a skull protecting yourselves and all that kind of stuff. All right, so over here we have a real life brain. Ambient room temperature, we're getting 21 volts per meter squared. Close to the brain, 41 volts per meter squared. Think harder, think harder. Um, I must okay. subscribe. Okay, 30 volts per meter squared. I'm going to go in again. 39, it's not really happening over here. Think harder, come on, come on. Oh, head to take is the best, head to take is the best. All right, nothing's happening over here. Of course, this meter only measures 50 to 60 hertz. The brain between four hertz all the way up to 90. So uh, we're going to need a bit more activity coming with you. <laughs> or maybe the skull is very, very good at defending mm. stuff. Nice one. Thank you for being on the show. You know, it makes sense that it could cause headaches if you stick your head next to electrical wires, and it makes sense that it could be some sort of biological effects, but obviously, again, right at the beginning, we read that the electrical safety limit is 5,000 volts per meter squared, and the highest we're getting around here is, is 1,000, so about a fifth, and that is the, the fridge itself. Other interesting notes from the WHO. Cardiovascular, cardiovascular responses, so EMF fields can influence your cardiovascular system and it can increase or decrease your heart rate by three to five beats per minute. Of course, this is negating the volts per meter squared, the actual power levels. So I guess if it's very, very low voltage, you ain't gonna do anything. But once you start pumping in high electricity, that's when you're gonna get the five volts per meter. Of course, you know, hearts, boom, you get recycled them. Brain and behavior. So the nervous tissue is sensitive to electrical signals it's coming from WHO's website. And it's likely to um, have um, reaction to EMF fields, but only when a certain threshold is reached, whether this induction cooktop is gonna do that threshold. That's uh, not, um, we're not gonna know with that one. We don't have the EMF meter to detect the levels. Hormonal and immune system responses. Now it says um, it might reduce levels and it get, could give a relationship with cancer, but they're still researching the situation. So there's a whole world of research being done in this field. From this test, I can only give you the radius of the electrical volts per meter because I'm not able to get you the kilohertz, that radiation field. But from what I can see, an extended arm length away is pretty much good enough for you. And of course, if you're cooking, you're not always going to be standing right next to it, getting the situation occurring. So that's how it is. So guys, let me know what you thought of this amazing deep dive into electrical fields. If you have any questions, ask them in the question below. And of course, Regarding pacemakers, the reason why you shouldn't be having a pacemaker around this stuff is because pacemakers, they're sensitive to EMF fields. And if you have a pacemaker here, it could disrupt the pace that it's meant to be making. I hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.